Welcome traders to today's webinar event. I'm your host, Sean Kozak, co-founder of Neural Street's Trading Academy. And we wanna welcome you to today's webinar event because we're gonna be talking about the system add-on known as the barometer. And what's nice about system add-ons is they're, they're great enhancements to pretty much every strategy that you guys can potentially trade, right? We all understand that Neural Street is a trading school and we have our signature strategies and we have our trading systems that we trade in the trading room and that we teach in our members area. But what a lot of you guys also benefit from is the fact that we have a huge development component to the company and we, we're a very large indicator provider as well. And so what happens is, you know, we develop these, these add-ons that a lot of traders actually contribute to, you know, influencing the development decisions on some of these product releases. And the barometer we actually released a while ago, and uh, we're really excited about kind of bringing it back into an event for day trading because ultimately it's, it's really an amazing tool for forecasting price uh, discrepancy, if you will. And I'm going to explain to you how we built this tool to be able to give us the inside information towards forecasting price volume range and direction before it takes place and it to me it's it's an amazing tool for explosive entries and for timing on the timing charts and we're going to talk about that uh in today's event so if you're a day trader you're in the right place first and foremost i am not a cta nor am i an advisor uh, I am not here to advise on trades, so if you do trade, please take a second to uh, you know, understand the risks associated with the business so that we can serve you within legal requirements. Excellent. So what's nice about the agenda is it's straight to the point. Um, with system add-ons, they are designed for specific reasons. When you build a system add-on, it normally solves a problem. When you use it, it's not so much a standalone system, it's a tool to enhance the analysis in a specific methodical way. And so one of the things that we did when we, we, we brought our development team together is we had a lot of traders you know, always asking, is there a way to kind of know when to expect things to happen before they happen? Or is there a way to look inside the data, not just with order flow, but you know, in, in terms of like arbitrage, right? And, and so many of you guys, you know, are gonna, you're gonna find that today's discussions are really about addressing, you know, the solution to the struggle. The struggle is a lot of traders never really know what to expect from a bar by bar basis. We have an understanding of what we can forecast, you know, we can look at structure, we can look at areas of interest, we can look at direction, but at any given time, the market can just pop and explode and we really don't know what's about to happen, right? Well, normally volume leads price. And when you combine volume with pace and with range, and we have the ability to go into micro data analysis, you're gonna see how that actually plays out in the barometer, okay? Um, what we're able to do is we're able to forecast what to expect to happen at least a couple bars in advance. and it's it's a pretty, pretty accurate depiction. We, we spent a lot of time trying to find a way to depict what to happen a couple bars in advance. And as a day trader, a couple bars in advance can make or break your trade, right? So the reason we coined this the ultimate system add-on because I find that, you know, depending on the user and depending on the system that they're trading, it can be a very, very good enhancement to your execution charts. Um, when we look at direction plus internals, I'm gonna show you the different gauges that are built onto the tool set so you understand exactly what it is. And my experience as the architect to the tools that we trade with, um, the biggest benefit to this system add-on is the arbitrage hidden gem. Uh, I truly believe that the arbitrage is what makes this tool. Um, you know, I, I looking out from the outside in, I've never seen anything like it in the space, which to me is a huge accomplishment. And, and for me personally, if you're somebody that wants to know when to expect the big boys to step in before uh, explosive moves happen, uh, this is definitely it. Is anybody else having any issues with audio? Jonathan's saying he's having some issues with sound. Is everybody okay with audio? You guys give me a yes if everybody's good. Might just be your connection. Perfect, thanks guys. So the tool set works with stocks, futures, and Forex. And since we haven't done this event in a very long time, what we've done is we've reopened past 
uh, pricing on big, big launch discounts. So we opened up a huge discount for everybody who's interested in using this, mainly because we only do add-on events periodically. And, you know, our pricing, our brand is, is, is top tier. So the point of the matter is when we can extend those discounts, you know, this is the time to, to take advantage of them, right? So that being said, I want to talk about a few things. The hard right edge is what we considered if this then that mentality, okay? So as a day trader, most of the people always start at the big picture and we work our way down. We look at big picture auctions, um, no sound at all. Okay, give me a second guys. Okay, Frank says audio is good but now no sound. Can you guys hear me okay? Mark can hear me, everybody's good. Okay, so if you're on an internet on your phone or something else, guys, rest assured, uh, might be your internet connection. When I got 90% of everyone saying it's good, moving forward, okay? So the thing about the hard right edge is that we all want to anticipate accurate decision-making, okay? Without a question of, our, of, of a doubt, we all want to be able to look at, okay, if this happens, then what, okay? And... The goal for me is always trying to fix problems. That's a big problem for traders from a development perspective, knowing what we can forecast in advance, okay? And so one of the things that we look at as traders, especially in the day trading space, is number one is directional bias. Number two is volume range and volatility. And then when we try to make a decision, you know, kind of anticipating what's about to take place, that's where the questions come in. The, okay, maybe I'm not sure about this or I start getting panicky or maybe get a little bit of phobia, fear, anxiety, right? You're not special. <laughs> no offense. We all feel the same thing. The heart starts to beat a little bit. Palms get a bit sweaty, get a little bit excited. That's just trading, right? But what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to build a tool that can prepare you, that can prepare you so that you don't feel like you need to get lucky in the market, okay? And that's exactly what we did. We, we literally built an add-on that is designed to forecast two aspects of day trading internals, okay? The first one is looking at multiple time frame direction on an internal basis. So as I, as I mentioned, I'm just going to grab a cursor here and just kind of talk about this. We're not talking about higher time frame like the 30 minutes, okay? Let's just kind of give you an example, okay? When we talk about directional bias, let's assume you're trading on uh, a 6-2 pullback bar, okay? Let's just say you're trading on a 6-2 pullback bar. Well, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to look internally into the data of the smaller time frame, the medium time frame, and the large time frame all relative to this fractal. Not so much higher time frame on the big picture analysis, not so much higher time frame on the 15 minute, right? We have different period settings that we use Fibonacci mathematics to be able to look inside the time frame that you're trading, almost kind of like internal timing, medium timing, large picture timing, and we all use it relative to Fibonacci based off the 6-2 pullback, okay? And we'll go into the details and the settings when we get onto the charts. But the point of the matter is, is that when we talk about multiple time frame direction, it's not so much, you know, what's the macro trend, what's the, the micro trend. We're really talking about our timing chart and always on the timing chart, okay? Now, when it comes to market internals, this is my favorite part of the tool. Market internals allows us to look inside a normalized scale for volume range and volatility. This you cannot adjust. This is a complete automated algo built internally. It took a very long time to code it and it took a lot of testing. And the point of the matter is, is that every market is different. If you have the NQ, the Euro USD, if you're trading Apple stock, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Every market has different volume, different range, different volatility. So what we have to do is we had to build a normalized algorithm scale to be able to make it so that it works on every market automatically. Okay. So this is exactly what this tool looks like. Okay. This is what we call, I, I like to call this,
the compass, if you will, or the reason we call it the barometer is because if you're, if you're a, a sailor and you're going out into the ocean, you really want to have some type of a tool to gauge the weather conditions, right? That's exactly what this tool is designed for. It is not designed for showing you where the entry and the exit is. It's designed to tell you what to expect before it happens, okay? Now, let me kind of ask you this. If I could tell you that you're able to forecast explosive reversals or explosive breakouts one to two bars before they happen, would you feel that that would be beneficial? Give me a yes or a no. I wanna know if you feel that if you could know with a certainty and some accuracy that you'd be able to see, okay, this reversal is about to pop, this breakout's about to explode, this type of a pivot is gonna really shake, right? Okay. That's what this tool is designed to do, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this discussion down into two parts, okay? I'm gonna draw a little line here, just like this. This is what I call the direction gauge. This is what I call the arbitrage gauge. We're gonna break these into two features because they're designed to, to cater to two different things. Okay, the arbitrage looks at explosive moves before they happen. The direction gauge looks at understanding trend continuations and overbought and oversold uh, conditions based off the fractal that you have the, the tool applied to. Okay, so let's kind of break this down a little bit and let's talk about the directional gauge. Okay, the direction gauge is basically built for um, three different fractals. Now, when I say fractals, I do not mean a five minute, a 15 minute, right? What we've done is we've scaled this to settings of what we call periods, okay? I'm gonna call period periodicity, if you will. And this is a little bit mathematic. This is a little bit mathematical for you because you know, it's, it, this gets a little bit more of a algorithmic base, but for those of you newbies in here, just sit back. And for those of you that understand what that means, perfect. Um, when we talk about you've got a large time frame, a medium time frame, and a small time frame, what we've done is we've assigned Fibonacci ratioing to be able to look at, say, let's say the 13, right? The, uh, you know, let's say the, I think it's like 34. And uh, the 61 period, or we could, there's many different ways we can ro rotate these. I have different settings. I'm just kind of giving you an understanding of different Fibonacci ratio numbers, et cetera. And uh, what this allows us to do is it allows us to be able to scale it based off mathematical periods rather than just time frame periods, okay? And so it's more algorithmic based. These are three different dials that will move according to the direction of those different periods. Now, what's nice about this is that you have the ability to set these into different settings. Now, this is super important. The development team and I spent a copious amount of time testing the periods. And what we found was that the default settings are very, very responsive. Should you choose to change the defaults, I don't have any stats for you <laughs> because I don't have any types of statistics to know the bar types that you're trading on or the timeframes that you're using. However, the periods that, uh, yeah, Jeff says 13, 24, 34. So what we've done is we've set this to 13, Jeff just came to the rescue, 21 and 34, okay? These are all periods of Fibonacci ratioing, okay? Now that's not a 13 minute time frame. That's a 13 period cycle of Fibonacci sequences, okay? And I know that without going into what Fibonacci ratioing is, it's, it's, quite, it's quite sophisticated, okay? Now, why do we do this? Well, because if you apply this to your charts, you're gonna find that you're gonna see that the smaller periods, the medium periods, and the large periods will change. So the question is, well, how do we know what to expect when these gauges are in different scenarios? Well, what I've done is I've kind of built this color coding and this is kind of me just kind of explaining what I would expect when the market gets to these certain areas, okay? So I just drew these little boxes behind here to kind of explain this. And what I've done is let's just start here at the uh, uptrending section, light green above N. N stands for neutral. 
So anytime the, the gauges are here to here, okay, in this section, I would consider this to be in an uptrending environment. So if any of those periods moved into that quadrant is where I would expect continuations, follow through on your entry charts. Does that make sense? Okay. When any of the gauges moved into here, I would expect downtrend continuations in those quadrants. Sometimes you'll have all of them in the same quadrant. Other times you'll have some of them in different quadrants. Obviously when the larger or the medium gauges are in specific quadrants, those will tend to be more impactful, right? And you'll always see the smaller gauge move before the bigger ones, okay? That's expected. So when we start getting out here, okay, and we start getting into the upper quadrant, right? This is where we're in an uptrend overbought scenario, dark red above the neutral. Or when we get down here, and we start getting down up into this section, downtrend oversold, dark green below. Now, really what this means is when you apply this to the chart, you're not going to see these quadrants. You're going to see this divider line right here. You got these divider lines, right? And uh, you can apply this to range, Renko, time. The main thing, Sam, is that this wants to, you need to apply this, okay? You need to apply this to your day trading timeframes. You don't want to be, I mean, you could apply it to big picture. I just personally don't have any experience using it on big picture analysis, okay? And the reason for that is most of the analysis is used for timing arbitrage, which we'll get into in the, into the next discussion. But I want to kind of give you guys an actionable example of why this type of stuff would be really important for you. Because let's take this example. Okay. Now the time, the market, the bar type doesn't matter, but you can see that we're in a range, right? You can see that we're in a range. You can see that the market's oscillating. And to any experienced trader, we know that this is considered expensive and this is considered cheap. When we're in a range, okay, normally you want to be buying the bottoms of the ranges, right? Well, I want to kind of explain a couple things. Do you, not, do you see where the dial is? This is the neutral. And if we kind of go in here and just take a look at the dial, and I'm just going to draw a little bit of black so you can see it. We are in that quadrant, okay? All three dials. That is the downtrending quadrant. That is the expected environment where the market should be going down. Now, you're at the bottom of the range. So a lot of traders would start to try to buy the bottom of that range. And what ends up happening is they don't realize what's about to happen. And if we go to the next image, this is an exact picture of what took place a couple bars after it broke down. Now, to a new trader, they would assume buying the bottom of a range makes sense because that's where the buyers are. If you're a breakout trader and you're looking to break out or trade a breakout or you're expected to pass, maybe you're at a demand zone there, a value area low there, an ARB level there, a value, you know, any types of support levels, but you're not, you're not sure if the level is going to hold. This type of a multi time frame period gauge can tell you when the market's not going to hold. Okay. And that's exactly what this does. It shows you that based off where those gauges are, what to expect in the beginning of the next couple price bars. Okay. So I want to kind of shift now to the other side of this, okay? Outside of looking at trend continuations, when we start looking at the directional gauges, I wanna talk a little bit about what to expect for reversals. Based off what you're seeing here, when I just explained the three dials, you've got large, medium, and small. What do you guys think is likely to happen when the large and the medium gauge is in an oversold condition? And we start to see the smaller time frame gauges moving up. When we're down here on the bigger ones and we start to see the smaller one lifting, what do you think is about to happen?
on that bar, at the close of that bar, we can see that this is a potential for a reversal. Well, what the gauges tell us is that the big picture is completely oversold and the smaller picture is starting to turn. That's exactly what happened. Now, these are just examples of how that works, okay? These are examples of what to expect of how to use these tools, how to use these gauges. Um, you know, the, the big thing here is that it really just depends on how the trader wants to use them. What's, what's interesting is that we have the ability to apply this to any fractal, range, Renko, pullbacks, minute, okay? TF, time frame. Uh, this is just a volume chart, Vishal. I, these are some old images that we had from when we took, we made the presentation, but uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter the time frame because everybody trades on different markets, right? The point of using an add-on is to adjust it to your time frames and your bar types, right? Now, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit because ultimately, um, ultimately the goal here is to identify, to me, there's two purposes to this tool using it for the time frame gauges, which is what I just showed you, or using it for the arbitrage gauges. And, you know, we all have our preference, right? Some traders love certain software because it does specific things, right? And then other traders say, that's great, but I love it because of this, right? Well, I personally, when I built this tool with our guys, this to me was one of the most sophisticated enhancements I've ever seen built for an add-on. And I'll explain why. Because it's a normalized scale. So what we decided to do was we decided to create what we call thermometers. And thermometers are where we get a chance to kind of read the pulse of the market, not on multiple time frames, internally on the current bars. And being able to forecast explosive moves. Now, let me kind of explain a few things. When you've got volume, volatility, and range, those are the three beating hearts of any market internally, okay? Volume measures the participation, volatility measures the speed of the market, which is considered the pace, and then range measures the, uh, the distance, okay? Now, all of these are statistical calculations, but they're done in the same way. Why? Because if you were to apply this to crude oil, how can you say that these thermometers are expected to be the exact same if you were to apply it to say the Aussie dollar? Or maybe you want natural gas or the spiders, right? Or the Euro USD. Either way, they all have different market internals. So what we did was we took a normalization scale and we built an algorithm that looks at discrepancies in what we call you know, explosive, explosive moves, essentially. And what we want to see, okay, I have a rule. It's called the 80-20. And I don't mean the 80-20 principle. I mean 80-20 in terms of the arbitrage. It says, when the current measurement is near 100, near. Okay, so let me just kind of put that near 100. So I would give or take 20, near 100 or greater for volume. So let me just kind of draw this over here. When the volume column, okay, I, I like to have it at 80. This is just me. Anything above 80, okay, and the other two are below 20. That, to me, tells me we are about to see an explosion in the market. And normally what ends up happening, okay, is you'll get a price bar. not really loving that. So let's say we've got a price bar, it's coming down, coming down, coming down, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got this bar here and this bar here, and all of a sudden you see the volume spike, but the volatility and the range don't move, the market just stays there, something big's about to happen. And what we're able to do is we're able to say, because of this arbitrage, we can forecast one to three bars in advance on explosive move based off arbitrage. Now, the reason I call this arbitrage is because I used to, I used to trade options when I first got started a long time ago. And options market makers, okay, they use 
arbitrage strategies to exploit options discrepancies. And arbitrage is where you look for discrepancies in, in data and exploit that data. Well, that's exactly what I decided to do. I decided to exploit the data to look at when we can forecast explosive moves before they happen. And so that's exactly what this does. So I'm gonna give an example of this, right? You can see that on this example, you can see that the volume spiked, okay? We're sitting here kind of just grinding down, just grinding down. And then all of a sudden you get a huge spike in volume, okay? And then all of the volatility in the range didn't move. Even though price is moving, nothing moved. And then what ends up happening, you can see an explosion happens. Boom, just a big pop. And you know, certain markets are notorious for this. Kind of like crude oil, uh, the Russell, NASDAQ, gold is sometimes like that. Um, you know, I don't trade too much FX at this time, but I know there are some explosive moves in Forex on certain pairs. But the big thing here is, is when to expect it. Right, like give me an example. Wouldn't you want to know that, you know, as the market's coming down here within two bars that we're about to get a massive explosion here, right? That's important to me. That would be important to me, especially if I'm trying to look for a trade law opportunity, not so much necessarily an entry strategy, but what to forecast. So the reason I call it the hidden gem is because when you use this tool and you apply it to any time frame on your entry charts. Doesn't matter if you're using range, Renko, pullback, whatever. You'll be able to see in advance how that would work, right? Even if you didn't even look at this, if you weren't even using this gauge right here and you just wanted to use arbitrage, to me, it's a master add-on. This to me is fantastic if you wanna gauge overbought and oversold and trend continuation situations, okay? So let me kind of explain how that would look on maybe say like an entry chart, okay? So give me an example here. This is just an example of, you know, potential combinations of how traders would apply this on a, on a chart, right? And what's nice is you can change the background colors. You can make them gray or, you know, depending on the chart background, you can change all the colors to your dials and, and all of that stuff, right? But, you know, a good example would be if we got a long signal, Okay, let's say we got a long signal on a momentum or let's say you got a trade signal or whatever the case may be, or maybe you're expecting to, uh, you know, you're expecting to, to not take this long and to take this trend trade, right? Or trade it down. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you this, that we are about to get an explosion because we're popping volume and we are not moving. Okay. So, AD saying, can you describe the range variable? Is it the same as ATR that is left? No, has nothing to do with uh, uh, ATR. It has a lot to do with probably about 10 ATRs. Because what we're doing is we're taking the normalized scale across every bar on your chart. We're comparing it to other periods of the same bar type and other fractals. And the reason this is important is because it, if you're using a range chart, well, every bar's ATR is the same. Can't do that. We look, at the, we look at the average range per minute of every bar versus, you know, different fractals. There's a lot going on in there, guys. Okay. So the cool part about this is we remove the heavy lifting for you. Now, I want to give you an example. Uh, just a word of caution, guys. I was having some platform issues. Okay. I was having some platform issues on Ninja. So I, I kept getting crashes, system crashes. So I'm not going to connect to data right now. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to load the web, the, the workspace for this example. And if it crashes, I might have to reload because I'm having issues with Ninja right now, which is just data. But I just want to talk a little bit about this. Okay. Crude oil. Right here. Let's move it right there. Okay. What do you see there in that this downtrend? What do you see in that arbitrage volume gauge right there? Huge spike in volume, right? But the bars aren't moving. Like they're all within the same range. What do you see in the dials? What do you see in the dials? Where are the big picture periods in that? Yes. Boom. Okay, wait a second. What about, watch the dials here. Like, like, 
Watch this right here. Boom. There goes from 80, right? Right here. What are, where do you see these dials? Where's the dials? <clears throat> Overbought. Where's the volume? Where's the volatility in range? Boom. I'm not sitting here trying to call every tops and bottoms, guys, and that's not what this webinar is about. This will identify the explosions before they happen. I don't suggest buying these types of tools and then just applying them to every single explosion. Let's assume you're a reversal trader, right? And you're, a, you're looking at the profile, right? You got a value rate low, you got a value rate high. And price is coming down, boom. And all of a sudden we get arbitrage, okay? And all of the gauges are overbought or oversold, excuse me. What do you think is about to happen at that value rate low? An, an enormous pop, okay? What if we came all the way up here to the very high and we got into it and all the dials moved up here, okay? And then all of a sudden you get a bunch of bars just kind of sitting there and then all of a sudden you see a massive spike in volume but none of these gauges move. That's to tell you the breakout's about to happen. The whole point is not so much about buy or sell, Robert, the point is knowing something is about to take place now before it happens. I didn't design this tool to be, show me when to entry, show me when to get out. I designed this tool to give you the hard right edge two to three bars in advance. Anything outside of that is a benefit, right? Because the point of being a system add-on is that when you have system add-ons, you apply them to any system. If you're a supplier demand trader, you're an order flow trader. Let's say you're trading a momentum system. Okay, let's say you got a trend, right? Two averages. You get a breakout, right? And you're a momentum trader. And we get to this breakout and you got momentum is going in your side and then all of a sudden arbitrage pops. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think that knowing that a breakout's about to happen when you're a breakout trader on a momentum system, it's a pretty good thing, right? Vishal saying, Sean, this tool would be really good at, at an area of interest. Yes, let's say you're trading the trend. Okay, there's our pullback entry. And all of a sudden we see a big spike in the arbitrage. Never mind the gauges in those situations because we're looking to engage in our entry. Just having a trend, boom, there's the pullback, and then we see the spike in arbitrage. See, here's where I like to, to look at this type of a tool. I already know that I have rules around directional bias, so I personally would not spend too much time looking at the directional bias. I would really only want to know if I'm completely overbought or oversold because as a directional trader, I'm already relying on structure and I'm already relying on averages and the auction, big picture stuff. But for me, as a, as a tool, overbought and oversold conditions are super, super powerful, especially when met with arbitrage. Okay, so if you're a trend trader being overbought on the pullback with arbitrage, huge opportunity. A reversal trader overbought or oversold with arbitrage, you know the move's about to happen. Give an example. Let's say you got a big D or you got a big profile, right? Let's just forecast this out. Traders are, you know, coming down and all of a sudden, boom. And in the trade room, we're talking about, hey, okay, you know, we're waiting for the delta flip and the three bar, right? I know a lot of you guys always hear me talk about the three bar pattern for order flow. And then all of a sudden we get the delta flip and then we see a spike in arbitrage. Hmm. Then all of a sudden the three bar comes right after it, it starts to lift. We can expect an explosive pop because arbitrage is happening. 
And that's the reason why we designed this tool, is to kind of give you the insight of being able to know what to expect price to do before it happens. Okay. How many of you guys think this is kind of neat? I thought so when we built it. <laughs> Mark says it's very neat, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's nice about add-ons is I don't need to sit here and explain everything about it more than the basics, the key components. Sometimes the simplest thing, okay, the simplest thing is the most efficient, okay? The simplest thing is the most efficient. Actually, Mer Mercio is asking, can you show this in real time? I want to, but I'm having platform issues. I'm having platform issues. That's why I'm not connected to data right now. Yeah, and I didn't want to kind of jeopardize the event and I didn't want to do all that, you know, for the sake of the presentation and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so the truth of the matter is, is that I would really encourage that if you have questions that, uh, you know, Jeff can do a demo with you or explain things with you over different times or different bar types, okay? Makes sense? That way you're not feeling like you're rushed or anything like that. It's always good to talk to a trader on, on some of the tools and just kind of get an insight on that. Um, that's why I'm kind of just keeping it on one example for now, just mainly because uh, I don't want to have any issues during the, uh, during the event, yeah. So first and foremost, here's how I would look at this. Number one, arbitrage, okay? Number two, overbought and oversold okay that's the two big ones for me because that tells me the pops about to happen on the reversal now for directional traders i would want to see hope i would want to see being in this gauge here you know i would want to see being in this right if i'm looking to to trade a direction i'd like to see if we could stay inside that momentum environment and then when we see a spike that's when i would expect a continuation of the trend when we see these arbitrage spikes inside of that okay so what i want to do is i want to talk a little bit about the training on it okay i want to talk a little bit about the training on this because one of the things that um we do is when we have system add-ons, a lot of people don't see them used every single day in the trading room or anything like that. So I wanna talk a little bit about what some of the stuff my team and I have built for using it. Um, when you go into the members area, one of the things that we do is we have uh, download pages for all the software that we've designed, okay? And so on the barometer page, on the barometer page, you're gonna find that there's licensing instructions, there's training videos, but I've also put an extra training video in here as well, which has a lot more training on the tool um, used on different markets, different timeframes, which is really nice because, you know, it not only goes over the UZI documentation here, but it goes over actual examples and some other examples in this environment as well. When we talk about the barometer user documentation, this is where I spend a lot of time kind of going in and, and mapping out the different environments, all the different settings, explaining the difference between the arbitrage and the scaling, which is really, really nice to understand. There's a lot more examples in here. Uh, I, I just kind of put a lot of different types of examples for you guys to see and different pops and different, different scenarios for you guys to understand the different gauges and the different locations, right? Also understanding the multi time frame function, you know, using it for sentiment, using it for direction, you know, that type of stuff in here as well. Looking at breakouts, you know, looking at the different examples. Here's another example of pullbacks. So I was showing some examples of sequences on the one, two, three pullbacks and kind of expecting when to expect pullbacks. You know, we can see lower highs, you know, on the pullback. We've seen the trend continuation. You can see the arbitrage exploding, right? This was really, really neat. And this was really, really exciting for us to see that. And then they just break and that just shows those traits, right? Um, you know, there's lots of examples. We spend a lot of time breaking down the user documentation for this because I think it's really neat because it can be applied in many different ways. And that's why we call it a system add-on, right? We call it a system add-on because it can be applied to every system. 